we can start with what he said in episode two about how why what he wanted from the witch's road he wanted the powers to like levitate and that kind of thing kind of the basic uh stereotypical sorcerer powers we know from this mid-season trailer that it's more than powers what he's seeking and uh, what i speculate in this other video and i think a lot of people are speculating is that he wants to resurrect wanda maximoff and that's what he's seeking from the witch's road uh, but he's been hiding that from agatha <laughs> Welcome back to the break room with the full press rollout that teen is Billy Maximoff. Yes, you don't need to type that comment. We know it's been confirmed. Uh, we've got to talk about all the interesting theories and revelations. Like, uh, has Billy been playing Agatha this whole time? We'll get to that in a second. Okay, let's hit that graphic. Headlines, headlines. It's not the yes. toes line, it's the headlines. That's right. And we've got a lot of good headlines today. We've Obviously, this video will be packaged around um, the Billy reveal on Agatha all along. Obviously. But, but we've got, well, because they've already clicked on the thumbnail, probably. <laughs> but we, we're going to talk about Invincible. We're going to talk about Venom, Last Dance. We're going to talk about Superman, all that stuff on today's episode. And when I say we, mm. I'm, of course, referring to the royal we, but also to Brandon Barrick. I've got a mouse in my pocket. <laughs> And Eric Voss. How did you recognize me with this sigil on my head? <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, I should have. Oh, man. If the, if the lower third Chiron was sigil. And I just, don't want to put any more work on Brian. You should censor. <laughs> Brian, put the thing on Zach's mouth. No, He already did don't. this once for John, no, uh, and it looked great. But, okay. Uh, so, yes, today is the headline show, often on a Monday, today on a Tuesday. And we've got a lot of good news to cover. Let's get right into it. Just this morning, we got the... The confirmation that Invincible Season 3 is coming out in February. Heck yeah. Wow. No mid-season break. I love that they put that on there. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's, I don't know why they had to do it. I'm sure there's some production reasons why they had to split up Season 3. I think two they, like that, I remember but. Kirkman talking about it. I mean, they make jokes in within the show where mm -hmm. the creator of Seance Dog in the show is like, well, animation takes a long time. I mean, <laughs> we cheat by covering up the mouth and blah, blah, blah. And even this, this uh, announcement trailer reused stuff from the season two announcement trailer, oh, that's so which is great. so clever and so funny. I'm like really fits, even like the whole setup is a redo. It, they just replaced right. Alan the Alien with Cecil, but mm. they even use some of the same shots and stuff. Uh, cool. Very fun. But yeah, I think the first season, it, uh, they had the break in season two because I think they were trying to get it out as fast as they could. Mm. A lot of these streaming platforms, Disney Plus included, have learned that animation is a little trickier than they thought. And sometimes takes longer than they think. I mean, Rick and Morty runs into this problem every season, where yes. it takes way longer than they think it's going to take. But they they have greenlit season three and four, oh. so I think they got a little ahead of themselves, and they were working harder and getting it. And, and this up. is definitely a shorter gap between season two and three than between season one and two. Yeah, wasn't that, that was like I mean, it was, it was almost two COVID. years for that was between one yeah. and two. It was almost like two years. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, this is great. They're going to drop three episodes that first day, February sixth, oh, wow. and then one the following eight, eight episode season. I believe so. Yes. Great. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So really looking forward yes. to it. And Jessica's working on a video right now about uh, that announcement and breaking down some cool details that you missed. And that's going to be coming out on the New Rockstars channel on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really excited to have more Invincible. In yeah. yeah, it's a fun show. I Even just going through it again and like remembering all the plot points for season two, I was like, oh, this is very exciting. I'm, I'm ready to get into yep. it. Prime, yeah. Prime doing a nice job with That's Invincible, good. the boys universe, Fallout. Yeah. Uh, James Gunn yeah. announced that Crypto the Super Dog will be joining next year's Superman movie. This is with wild. A photo here. I mean, they are going full everybody yeah. in yeah. this movie. Yeah, it's like they're not saying no to anyone. Uh, like... Rather than past adaptation of Superman was about like saying no to certain aspects of Superman from the comics, James Gunn is just trying to fit it all into this movie. And it's a bold strategy. Let's see if it pays out. Because it's going to be like, might be too much for some people unless you just have some of this in like the first act montage. Just because there's so many villains in this. I don't know how you balance all that out with yeah. like a Lex Luthor driven antagonistic energy, you know? Like... It's just, I think crypto is just the dog. It's fine that the dog is in this. This isn't the best example of it, but we're just kind of, I'm curious to see how it all fits together. I, I wonder if this is like, you know, the next evolution of kind of um, superhero movies, I guess for lack of a better term, because uh, we've gotten to this point now where they're, they're kind of toying around with the idea of like, oh, we skip uh, the origin stories, right? They, they did it with the more recent 
uh, incarnation of Spider-Man in the mm-hmm. MCU, right? They kind of just skip to him already having powers uh, and going that way. So I think I, he's making a good bet here that like fan society knows enough about Superman that he doesn't have to do the whole origin story. Or who knows, there might be like flashbacks in this movie. But I love this idea of kind of just dropping in the middle. All these people are here. He's not the first hero on Earth. He's not the last. There's villains. There's other good guys. You know, he just kind of fits into this world in an interesting way. And I'm excited, too. We talk about this a lot. You know, the modern kind of Nolan with the Dark Knight and the MCU. Trying to be like, what if heroes existed in our world very realistically? I like this idea of building a world that's not our world. Mm -hmm. It is very different and is almost like a everything is touched by comic books in Mm -hmm. a weird way. So it's like crypto, the super dog doesn't seem so strange. I mean, it shouldn't seem strange if you have Superman already, but uh, I I like this idea of making a more fanciful world. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the challenge will be, can that fanciful world uh, feel tactile and realistic in a way Uh, in animation? Like I always go back to the 2004 Incredibles film. You can do a whole bunch of stuff and just kind of create an alternate retro world. Um, And I was encouraged with Brandon Davis's interview of Michael and Mick Giacchino talking about the Fantastic Four, um, how that seemed to be like a practical set, not a lot of volume green screen stuff. And I hope James Gunn Superman does that as well. Uh, we saw like an alternate daily planet as, as like a facade, yeah. but I, we haven't seen a lot of the Metropolis other than the background of that uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps poster. And I just hope that he's able to have like a convincingly Elseworld Metropolis uh, without it being too like vfx Yeah. Yeah. Be very interesting. And to see how this overlaps with his other DC properties set in the same yeah. uh, cinematic universe. And uh, James Gunn also mentioned in his post the uh, he was inspired by his adopting of a rescue dog, Ozu, mm-hmm. as he was writing Superman to oh. include him in the story. Change the shape of the story, as he said. Interesting. Um, and as Evan has been standing for hard, do we get a live action Super Pets movie? <laughs> Listen, I really, I mean, countless afternoons coming home from school watching the Crypto, the Super Dog animated show, and Scooby-Doo, both of those always on. But yeah, I mean, there was a, a League of Super Pets movie animated with Kevin mm-hmm. Hart um, last year. Yeah, who knows? If, if Superman's dog is crypto, is Batman's dog Batcoin? Damn. Okay. Oh, that's, um, good. that's, that's good. a good That's pick. good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> only, the blockchain. Only, only, <laughs> only the blockchain knows. <laughs> Uh, uh, in um, uh, spumsy news, um, uh, let's get into uh, one of the other big topics. Um, the director and co-executive producer, writer of Venom, uh, The Last Dance, uh, did an interview, uh, Kelly Marcel, where she teased that this is not going to be the last appearance of Null. She said that's too big of a villain to be okay. one and done, in her own words. So, I mean, if... If it's not, but but Tom Hardy and, and Kelly Marcel in this interview have both said this will be Tom Hardy's last appearance as Venom. They, mm-hmm. they had a three movie story that they wanted to tell. They will conclude it here. So where's the next place we see? No, it won't be in, or could it? Could it be in Venom 4, but it's a different Venom? I, I have no idea. <laughs> and I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if Kelly gets to make this decision uh, because it seems like after this point, if, if they want to continue null in a storyline, you know, they, they have set up a couple things in the MCU, right? You know, they left behind some goo from Venom. Uh, in Thor Love and Thunder, we have the Necro Sword, which its history is connected to Null, though they didn't really get into that as much in that movie. But I don't know if it, the MCU is going to take this Null from Sony and be like, yeah, come on in. So it would be up to Sony to keep making these movies. And I'm sure Sony wants to keep making symbiote movies because they've been the most successful of their kind of villain verse well i mean you could films. see yeah so it could cross over into spider-man 4 right mm-hmm. which we've we've heard rumors that it's not going to be a street based film but a little bit more uh big cosmic cosmic multiverse. whatever that world whatever that means no lives on another planet that qualifies as cosmic hey um and could we see some overlap there right Secret Wars, is there a, a Spider-Man in a symbiote suit? And then he fights Null after the fact, before the fact. Yeah, do we know if um, like Marvel Studios execs, including Kevin Feige and his execs, do they have the right to veto mm. elements of Spider-Man 4? Because obviously these are joint productions between Sony and between Marvel Studios. They're having the same screenwriters of uh, McKenna and Summers working on it. Obviously they're going to pitch stuff and obviously Sony execs are, uh, they have to greenlight stuff. I imagine 
for for it to have Marvel Studios in front of it and to have Kevin Feige listed as a PGA executive producer, like, doesn't it seem like if something like a very goofy version of Null that fans weren't crazy about from, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Venom <laughs> oh 3, but if it doesn't, if it kind of lands like a wet fart. Like Carnage did? <laughs> well, people kind of, yeah, I don't know. I think the, uh, wasn't the jury a bit mixed on Carnage? Like, I think so, I, yeah. I think people, that movie was still successful, but like, I just don't imagine that Kevin Feige is going, if, if he's not crazy about the way Null fits into a Tom Holland Spider-Man story, I imagine he'd be able to say, absolutely not. Like, right. yeah. like, I know it's a Sony film, but, like, no. Yeah. Come well, up with another and, idea. And for the purposes of this quote, right, like, Kelly Marcel may not know what the next appearance of sure. Null is going to be. Yeah. She may be just kind of hinting, Null will not die at the end of Venom last Well, time. and she's yeah. not going to say, you know, she wants to build hype for this movie and, you know, Sony's franchise in general. And she's not going to say, like, oh, this is... This is the only movie you'll see Nolan, so don't. And I'm encouraged by that. I, yeah. I think, like, I think. I don't want people, them to kill him off in no, this movie. No, he shouldn't be able to be killed. Like, he's a god. And I think that's been a frustration of a lot of Marvel movies is that these very, very powerful villains are done away with in one movie. And I think a villain like Null should persist. Like, whatever the conflict that Eddie and Venom are going through shouldn't involve having to kill or destroy Null because that's just too intense. Yeah, there was this great quote towards the end of that interview where uh, Kelly Marcel said that here, Null is the threat lurking behind the danger that tests the absolute limits of Eddie and Venom's partnership, but it's their relationship that remains the heart of this story. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting to see like how they're going to tee this up. I think we said this either last week, but like to me, it does feel like Null's involvement on in this movie will be akin to Thanos in Guardians 1, mm -hmm. right? Where we see this presence... But the, the form of the immediate danger to the protagonist is not that person, sure, right? Got it. It's yeah. Ronan the Accuser. It's a bunch of these goo guys, you know? Yeah. Like, goo guys. Yeah. <laughs> goo guys. Are there goo guys. a goo guy symbiote stories beyond Tom Hardy's take on Eddie Brock in Venom? Like, does that does this franchise exist without Tom Hardy? That's a great question. Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to have to. It I mean, they're like... going to keep making Venom movies yeah. one way or another. Is there just like a three-year gap and then a hard reboot where it's... A they new actor over. playing Eddie Brock. D.H. I mean, Tom Hardy. D.H. Tom Hardy. I imagine Timmy they Hardy. Have, they want to combine Spider-Man and Venom at some point, and Sony wants to have the reins on that. I, I would disagree. Imagine. Maybe they overlap, but they want them to be standalone franchises as much as possible, right? Like Venom is arguably because again, the Spider-Man movies are co-productions with Marvel, so they also only get to keep half the money. Uh, but Venom is all of them, and those movies are incredibly successful, mm. right? Like, it, could you see Null as the big bad for all of these villain? I mean, is Null showing up in Craven too? I don't think so. I, I don't think Craven would be too. A... Man, he's Babe Ruth in this bad boy. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't even seen the first one, baby. I mean, here, here's all I'll say: a Craven two that's R, R rated with Null in it. Here's yeah. my pitch. <laughs> For, for Pascal, or really Tom Rothman, uh, and everybody at Sony, uh, take this uh, hatted loser on YouTube's advice mm. and just throw as much money at Andrew Garfield as he wants yeah. to have him come back for a third Amazing Spider-Man movie and make that be a Venom story. I don't think we need Venom in the MCU with, uh, with Tom Holland. Like, I just don't think we need that story. Right. I don't want it to be a Venom story. But to see the darkness... Uh, that Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker talked about in No Way Home and let that be like a Venom story, I'd, I'd show up for that. They need to be developing their own Peter Parker and let Andrew Garfield do it. I don't know if they it. can do that outside of Marvel, and I don't know that Marvel would ever allow there to be two competing live action Sony, Sony Well, aren't Sony they doing two a, live action maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know Sony what wants a Spider-Man. They clearly want a Spider-Man. They tease it in all of these movies. They dance around it. I think they're just, they, they know they can't have Tom because Tom's not going to do it without like Marvel. Tom, uh, MCU. I'm sorry, you have to use last name. Tom Holland, sorry. <laughs> Tom Holland's not gonna do it without like Marvel there to like keep him safe, keep his character safe, keep his career safe. Yeah. Uh, but they want a Spider-Man to face off against these villains at some point. I love the idea. Yeah, bring back Andrew Garfield. Bring in a, a live action Miles Morales. Like find an answer. It doesn't have to be Peter Parker, but they need a spider person who's an actual hero to take on some of these villains. <laughs> and I think they want to do it, but I just, I feel like they haven't found the right formula yet. And if if this villain verse, if every movie had done as well as these Venoms, they'd have a they'd have a plan now, and we'd be seeing like a Sinister Six Sinister Six yes. movie. It, they were clearly going that way, and it's the the train started falling I, apart on I, the on the tracks. I, I also think right, like a valid criticism of their of the Morbius and maybe Craven and Madame Web is like when you take 
villains and make them the heroes right. of these movies, right? They lose a lot of what makes them special. But when you take villains, you make them heroes. But then you take like a next level villain to pit them against. Maybe that makes it a little bit more interesting. I'm just mm. saying like, I would be more interested in Morbius versus Null than I would be Morbius versus cops and scientists or whatever. I know That's Morbius nice. got the closest, because Morbius kind of ended with him being like, nah, I'm going to stay a vampire. Like, I'm going to stay back. He was the one that seemed to be the most evil still at the end of his movie. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay, let yeah. them all be that evil. <coughs> all right. Well, I, I'm sure it, however it shakes out will be great. Um, <laughs> speaking of things that shake out and are great, before mm. we get into more headlines, oh, okay. I want to thank one of our sponsors, Mando. Okay? Uh, since they started sponsoring Break Room, we've literally all been sneaking home these products. Uh, in fact, I don't know that we even have any right now because mm. um, oh, half of them are uh, have been have gone through my bathroom uh, <laughs> and been used up. Uh, Mando uh, makes a lot of great products, including their four in one. It's a five ounce bar, okay, that does the work of a shampoo, a face wash, a body wash, and a deodorant. And it's clinically proven. A lot of their products they use the Mando in the title is uh, this Mandalaic acid. It's this alpha hydroxy acid that cuts odor out at the source and i can attest okay i can get funky all right and i'm not just talking about dropping a nasty baseline okay <laughs> i mean i have body odor okay i'm a, I'm a full-grown man who could eat better okay <laughs> and sometimes i stink but not with mando mm. i will say like even after if i put it on in the morning full day at work maybe i even go do something at night I get home, you're getting ready for bed, you take your shirt off, you know, you get to this point in the shirt taking off where your pits are right next to your nose, it still smells good. Evan, can you, do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, you took your shirt off in front of me, I, oh I said, gosh. yeah, smells like second. nothing. It was when we were prepping for the big show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I have put my pits up in yeah. several people's faces. Uh, <laughs> I'm not wearing Mando right now, otherwise I would do it as, again. Uh, but if you haven't used it before, uh, start with the starter pack. It makes a lot more sense than starting with the end pack. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so amused. Oh the He's merrily we go along pack. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I've been using this pack for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a solid uh, stick deodorant, uh, a cream tube deodorant. Two free products of your choice, including the mini body wash, maybe the deodorant wipes, and you get free shipping. Use our discount code. Okay, it's right there on uh, the screen, break room. New customers get $5 off your starter pack with our code. So that equates to about 40% off, which is what a discount. Use code break room at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. Okay, and wow, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting Word, we're getting a message what? from Break, Evan in the news. multiverse. What? Evan jumping in to say that today's episode of The Break Room is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Watching epic battles on a movie or TV show is one thing, but getting to play them is so fun, and that's why we play Raid. And yeah, we know people think that mobile games might not have any depth, that they're just time sucks, they're all pay to win, and maybe some are, but Raid is the exact opposite. There's depth, strategy, an auto battler to save time, and you never have to spend a dime. There's so much to do in Raid, there's over 30 bosses that you can take on with over 800 champions and well over 1 1 million different builds. Plus, there's new content drops monthly and over 4 million users to fight with or fight against. If you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or scan our QR code to get insane bonuses available only via our link. You will immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion, Tayrell from the High Elves faction. Many players consider Tayrell to be the very best epic that Raid Shadow Legends has to offer with his high arsenal of high power debuffs suited for all occasions, even birthday parties. And you'll get another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes an epic Rector Draft. Come find us and join our new Rockstars clan. If you are a new player, fear not, you can use the promo code RAID ALL DAY from our bio and access 10 times Force Brew, 50 multi battle attempts, and 200k silver. That's promo code RAID ALL DAY for all the new users. Thanks, Raid Shadow Legends, and hey, back to you guys. No more. All questions. right. And of course, 
uh, check out nerdriot.shop. Yeah. Right? Brandon's wearing a brick room mm. hoodie. Eric's wearing uh, our uh, new mask, same task. Mm. Inspired, and, and the uh, sigil hat. And the, the sigil, sigil hat. I'm, yeah, I'm double double dipping it here. Yes. This sigil hat is like awesome. I'm so it's like my favorite thing. It honestly. comes in a beanie too. It yeah. also comes in a beanie. It comes in a beanie. Wear it while we still don't know what it is. Yeah. No, honestly, I think this could be. A, it's like a cool design. This yeah. could be in anything. And if you wear it, no one will know your identity. Yeah. That's It'll true. cloak you yeah. to Legally, any supernatural you, now, sorcerer. Now, it could get you in trouble if you try to go through TSA yeah, or something like right. that. You yeah. can wear it and say your uh, ATM pin code and no one will hear it. Wait, but... No, because we can hear other stuff that... Eric, say your pin <laughs> code. <laughs> and we'll, I'll tell you if I hear it or not. Uh, uh, two, four, six, eight. I heard nothing. I heard okay, nothing. Wow. Okay, wow. Okay. Excuse me, I had to step out. Wait, really? should I also get my rowdy <laughs> number need, and my Don't you need number? his ATM code? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. We said at the top um, <laughs> that there are multiple stories uh, out in the press uh, confirming that Teen is Billy Maximoff. Hell yeah. You know, what we all assumed based on that final shot of episode five. But um, as covered in Entertainment Weekly, and shout out to uh, Andy Ortiz at The Wrap, uh, who have done respective interviews with Joe Locke and showrunner Jack Schaefer. Um, kind of confirming all these things and giving us a lot of juicy tidbits that we're going to get into right now. Um, Eric, this kind of coincided with a mid-season trailer that you have done a breakdown of. That mm -hmm. will be out on the channel... Now. now. Or it's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, by the time you're watching this, it's probably already out. Yeah. Uh, and so there's, there's a lot of stuff we, we want to get into from both of these interviews. Uh, starting in the Entertainment Weekly Joe Locke interview, he said that they played with a gray area when talking about Billy's actions, saying that at the end of episode five, he's not doing a good thing. Does that make him a bad person? Is he a good person? Hmm. What do we think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he talked about how, he called it the uh, facade, the fanboy facade. Like mm -hmm. that there were times where he was like, fanboying out with the coven and then with the witches, but like, was that false? Was mm -hmm. it? And I think we have to go back and look at everything he has said. And I think we can start with what he said in episode two about how why what he wanted from the witch's road. He wanted the powers to like levitate and that kind of thing. Kind of the basic uh, stereotypical sorcerer powers. Obviously, that's bullshit. And we know from this mid-season trailer that it's more than powers, what he's seeking. And uh, what I speculate in this other video, and I think a lot of people are speculating, is that he wants to resurrect Wanda Maximoff. And that's what he's seeking from the witch's road. Uh, but he's been hiding that from Agatha. Mm. But do we think like every moment has been a lie? I think there's some moments with like Alice that he genuinely yeah. loved her and he was very horrified to see her die and very mad at Agatha. That wasn't false. Uh, and I think that moment at the beginning of episode three when he's burying Sharon, or no, at the end of episode four when he's burying Sharon and he goes, you didn't think who had what in them? And then Agatha winks at him and then he just is like, oh, God, mom, or it's not mom, but you know, that kind of like eye roll. I think that was real. I think anytime he's been like frustrated with Agatha mm -hmm. for moving too slow or stalling or bullshitting them, when he's like, you need a drink at all, I think he's calling her out in that moment. But anytime he's like crushing on her, I think was, was fake. Interesting. Mm. It is interesting because he's been arguably the most sincere character on yeah. the show. Very earnest in most of his interactions with all the other characters, including Agatha, right? So for us to find out midway through the show that that was all a lie would be an interesting choice. But I do like the language here, gray area, which like, really when you think about all the characters on this show in some way are operating in a gray area, right? Like most of their motivations are a little elusive, especially mm -hmm. Agatha, Billy, and Rio, especially, right? Like they're not being totally straightforward. They are often doing things with their magic or with their actions that might be to suit their goals and not necessarily everybody else's, right? Or might have negative impacts on other people, which is really interesting. I yeah, like that. Jennifer kind of gave it away at the end of this last episode where she was like, this is all about power, right? Like we're all looking for that thing. and. Lilia didn't kind of fight her on that. She was like, we're all scared of death. We're trying to just stay alive. So it is, the, you know, they're all kind of playing each other a little bit and being nice when they don't need to be, or they might have their own ulterior motives. I guess what's interesting with this whole thing is why Billy felt the need to use Agatha anyways. It, if he has more knowledge than he's let on, uh, why is he using, does he need Agatha on the road for wow. more of a purpose? If anyone could access the road, I guess, was he going to Agatha because she, he, 
that's the only witch he knew had walked the road before through legend or is like why why use agatha at the end of the day maybe Does he need her on the road to get wanda back i don't know maybe agatha is the most recent possessor of the dark hold mm. and so you know the dark hold is destroyed in all its iterations as of you know multiverse of madness we don't know if that's true for most this recent show. besides wanda most uh, recent living oh yeah yeah besides yeah. wanda yeah yeah uh so if he if his goal is to resurrect wanda his mother or his like cosmically linked mother, uh, then he might just need the the witch who was most advanced in that form of magic through her ownership of the Darkhold for so long, uh, and someone who had this connection to not just Wanda Maximoff, but to these boys. Like, we are noting that he, according to this trailer, is being called Billy Maximoff, and that's odd for a lot of people because mm -hmm. he's Billy Kaplan in the Young Avengers comics. He was born to the Kaplan family, but Agatha is already calling him Billy Maximoff, which just means she sees the link to Wanda in him. And so we don't really know yet how they're going to adapt it in episode six and seven and eight yeah. and nine of the show, but it seems like some piece of the Billy Maximoff that was conceived by Wanda inside the hex, as that hex was collapsing, latched onto this Billy Kaplan kid from Eastview in whatever this car accident was, and then um, kind of reincarnates in him, making him, in Agatha's eyes, Billy Maximoff. So it's like that piece of Julian Hilliard's character from WandaVision that uh, Joe Locke is playing that other identity of. And we should just remember in, in WandaVision episode 7, didn't it, it, was, it was that kid, Billy, who was looking up at Agatha and was able to like call her out on her bullshit in that moment and seemed mm -hmm. to be able to like hear her thoughts when they were sitting on the couch. And I think that is the version of the character that Joe Locke is now playing mm -hmm. as like he is onto her. And I think uh, these are also these two kids who at the end of episode 8 were being strangled by Agatha through these two tethers. Um, and so all of this is now part of the backstory of the character Joe Locke is playing. Every horrible thing that Agatha did to physically torment them and emotionally and psychologically torment them. Uh, so that's where he's coming at it, but he understands that like Agatha knows how to uh, empower um, Wanda into the Scarlet Witch, and that is the version of the Scarlet Witch that we picked up with in the events of Multiverse of Madness, and I think he views her as necessary to like resurrecting her in whatever the witch's road has ahead. Yeah, Evan. Um, I, I love all of that. We I ran a poll in the chat while you guys were talking. What does uh, Billy want from the road? I, I gave three options to save Wanda, to punish Agatha, or to save Tommy. Oh. Uh, people like Q YouTube in the chat, um, saying, I think he wants to get his brother back. And Bonnier52 even suggesting, I think Billy wants to resurrect whoever was in the car crash with him. Which is an interesting mm. thought too, right? Because if he is Billy Kaplan and his parents died in the car crash and, you know, maybe he wants them back instead of uh, because he doesn't feel as much of a connection to Wanda in a certain sense, you know, mm. or mm. he's operating off of one feeling to, to do something else. I think that's interesting. I think, think it's about. interesting. And of course, we, we were talking before we started rolling, this interview is timed in a very interesting place there's been some big things revealed in the show but obviously more to come in this same interview joe Locke mentioned episode six is a billy focused episode he said it was his favorite episode which of course you say well if that's the episode you get the most lines right? I <laughs> but that uh, but that interestingly he said episode seven he thought was the best episode of the oh, series and he said that like jack schaefer really went wild in episode seven. Yeah. And then I believe eight and nine are going to be dropped the same day. Yeah, th so it's kind of a co-finale type of an episode. So yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes sense if, if seven is that penultimate episode. Yeah. Maybe there's a huge cliffhanger. Maybe, you know, a lot of times in different shows, that's where the big battle is. Mm -hmm. Or that's right. where the... The real crazy stuff happens. Do we think Tommy's soul got stuck in like a squirrel or something like that? <laughs> so it's like, ah, nuts! A hedgehog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's gotta I, go fast. Wasn't there a talk that like the Vision series might have uh, the kid from Euphoria playing a version of Tommy Shepard in that Vision series? Yes, I think so. That's a, like a, yeah. a, rumor, a rumor. Yeah. Or the, confirmed. In that one comic where they, he has like Android kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the two daughters, the Tom yeah. King Tom vision. King, yeah. yeah, and then has two daughters and one of the, the do or two kids. There's a son and a daughter mm, and that daughter. Right. Oof. So I also wonder too, to if, if like Billy Maximoff, the created one, his soul or whatever got into this, whoever the teen is, <laughs> what happened to the teen's soul, right? Yes. Are they sharing a body? Yeah. Was, was like... Was Billy kind of whispering in whoever that person was and got them interested in magic? And as soon as they got to that point in the road, just Billy took over fully and was like, 
I'm also, in charge now. Also, I'm know, the captain now. We know Billy has a, <laughs> Billy has a boyfriend. Was he dating Boyfoy. this person before yeah. Billy Maximoff got got uh, uh, shared his yeah. soul? Also, can you only share the soul with somebody that has your same first name? Well, one thing that I talk about in the other video is the fact that in that shot in the midseason trailer, he's not wearing goth clothes. He's wearing a white collared shirt mm. with a tie that makes him look like he's about to knock on your door and ask if you've welcomed Jesus Christ into your home. Yeah. Mm. Like he does not look like a goth. And it seems like mm. that piece of Wanda's magic made him his goth identity. And so I'm just thinking like, did any of us have souls or personalities before we got to high school anyway? Not really? No. If you're 13, you got nothing going on, unless something horrible has happened to you. Mm. But if you're just some kid from the New Jersey suburbs or a kid from the Jacksonville suburbs like me, I didn't have a soul until I met you guys when I was 18 years old at the University of Florida. That's and he made me play uh, quarter, party quirks. Can't confirm. At, made you play? Come on. I volunteered. <laughs> I muscled my way through the crowd to write my name on that board. But no, that's the thing. Like, if you were young, you cannot say that you have much of an identity anyway. Well, so I'm and, like, and there's a fun metaphor there with like puberty, discovering yourself, like the trauma of both your family dying and the soul of this dead witch's kid jumping into yours. Hey, there's I a was, lot going on there. I was a blank slate, a tabula rasa, until I saw a little film called The Matrix. And then I woke up. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. You had eyeliner on the next day. Oh baby. Trench coat, eyeliner. <laughs> Ninja skills. <laughs> um, so we, you were talking about how the next episode is going to be a Billy-focused episode. Mm -hmm. uh, Little King Trash Mouth asking, do you think we'll find out what Billy said in the car with Agatha about his background? We have seen mm -hmm. some clips, right, where we might get a different, uh, you know, perspective on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really curious to see if this is like a flash, like pseudo flashback episode. How far is this going to go? You know? Yeah. There was that one shot, right, where we saw Agatha kind of kicking him over. In, in episode one, we saw her do it in her world, but then we saw a version that was just like in her house mm. where, you know, she wasn't in the police station. And I wonder if this Billy episode is going to take us all the way from whenever the accident was all the way up to this point where we ended the episode. Yeah. And we'll maybe even see like alternate angles from some of these trials where he was doing something in the background. Oh, yeah. See, I think it's go the episode's going to begin on that road from Westview to Eastview, the hexes on the tree line, and the car accident happens. And we're going to see over the past three years what he's been doing. Uh, we're going to replay the events of episode one uh, and just see what was going on in Westview from Billy's perspective. Uh, and then we'll end at like, we'll have like some scenes at the end of it where uh, they are coming out of the mud. Or maybe yeah. we go back and forth or something like that. But I think we got to end on the witch's road mm. rather than just end in that moment where he's he's wicked yeah. again. Mm. Um, just because I think episode seven structurally has to be the Lilia episode. So I, I just feel like pacing wise, they're going to... They're gonna have them come out of the mud. In Do either of you think that at the you know back in WandaVision season one, the stinger at the end right was Wanda in her little cabin reading the book, and then she hears like the voices mm. of Billy and Tommy being like, "Mom, help us." Do we think that was the the spirit she had created reaching out, and one of them is Billy before he gets attached to the teen? Are those versions of? of her kids from other universes reaching out? Or was that like a nefarious force pretending to be- Ooh, the dark hole. The dark hole itself convincing her to do more and more research. Or are you know, saying the this Dweller is in a, Darkness. A I knew you were style. going to Wenwoo. Wenwoo's back, baby. <laughs> Dweller in Here's Darkness. Here's my question. Is Billy Kaplan really Wenwoo? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, you bring up a really good question. Why were those kids in distress mm -hmm. in the WandaVision post credit scene if in Multiverse of Madness they were just happily watching yeah. cartoons and, and, in the 838 living and, room? And one of them was living inside a Teen Boy's body the whole time. Yeah. 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 Singing about what dessert? Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. We so good. I will never. Maybe they were like, "This one does not giving us ice cream." But I bet if we reached out to a wand in a different universe, oh. she'd come here, kill our mom, and give us ice cream. Hell mom, yeah. wouldn't that be nice? Help! Help! She's making us eat Milo wafers <laughs> and snack well devil's food cakes. <laughs> snack well. <laughs> she put my PS5 in the garage and won't let me play it. I want my other mom. Let's find the Wanda from the Blue Bellaverse. <laughs> Um, <laughs> she made she made dad move out and now he's got a new girlfriend and he has an apartment and it's lame. Uh, Is Vision's new girlfriend just a TI-83? Uh, also, oh I was going to say earlier, 
Billy, him being Billy Maximoff, took his mom's name. Shouldn't it even be a hyphenated Billy Vision Maximoff? Or wait, is or, Vision Vision's last name? He's like Mario it's Mario. Prince. <laughs> it's Prince. It's Prince. It's just Vision. Um, before we move on to some of the other uh, tidbits from the interviews about some of the other witches, um, Eli Finley asking, does confirming teen as Billy Maxwell make it more or less likely that Wanda appears in the show? Ooh. I they've been they were, from the jump right. They were like, no Wanda in the show, which makes me think Wanda's going to show. Well, up and and you know what? Typically in things where it's like they don't want somebody to show up, they won't invoke them constantly. Yeah. Right, like, but to have a character named Maximoff who clearly is styled and like they're not like this isn't some other kind of alternate Billy Maximoff mm. that's not related to Wanda. Like we know it will. It would feel strange to make it so much about her and not have her. Appear, I mean, to right? to like mm. the Penguins' credit, right? They have yeah. not said the B Man. They haven't name said Batman's all. name once. They haven't said show. Bruce Wayne's yeah. name. We saw Wayne Tower, but it's so tiny in the background. Well, like, they are not bringing up, you yes. know, Oz is in, like, I can't believe that fuck face drove me off the road two episodes ago. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> he cursed, they cursed. He did, it's a hard R show. Curse the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we would know, or there'd be some kind of leak or rumor that Lizzie Olsen showed up on a call sheet somewhere. There's just too many people who would have to keep that quiet. Like, they, you would have heard months ago some rumor, but if they were able to keep that under wraps, that would be like Chris Evans in Deadpool yeah. Wolverine level they can secrecy. Do it. I was at D23, they got a mobile volume. They can drive that thing around town. Put it in her backyard. Yeah, it's they just, never even know. They're shooting so much in the Atlanta area. Even the car crash scene, people got a cell phone video of thinking it was a shot yeah. for Stranger Things season five. Just that car swerving off the road. Like, so I think like, Someone would have said something. Maybe they think there's going to be a love and death season two, and they were like, "That's why." That's why. That's Elizabeth why Elizabeth Olsen was in town. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I think they'll reference Wanda. Where's I think, my love and death heads at? <laughs> I think his objective could be. I love that show. It could be resurrecting Wanda. I just don't think they're going to have Elizabeth Olsen appear on set. I think they'll, they might show archive footage. Yes. You might hear her voice. Will they, yeah. will or, they pull an acolyte and we see the back of Wanda's head? With the with the crown, how we saw uh, the back of Yoda's yeah, head all yeah. years. Someone might see a glowing vision the way mm. at, uh, Wanda saw of herself. Not when, vision, though. Yeah, not Different vision. Glowing vision. You know the silhouette in uh, WandaVision episode eight where she saw into her future. Yeah, yeah, you might yeah. see that same silhouette okay. yeah. on this show because that's easy enough to do with that. Something like record. that. Yeah. Speaking of characters we may or may not see in this remaining show, right? Jack Schaefer did confirm that Alice Wu is dead. And when asked if Nicholas Scratch is dead and gone, Schaefer confirmed that too. But said that especially in regards to Alice, she also said that it's not the end of the conversation. Being dead, yeah. especially being dead on the witch's road, does not mean we won't see. We've already seen one confirmed dead ghost mm -hmm. in this show, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Agatha's mom popped What's up a live last episode. Ghost? It's a great question. Well, you got to be dead to be a ghost. Right. I don't know. I, I think a live ghost is, uh, uh, what's her face? Uh, Hannah John Kamen, Ava Starr. Uh, that, yeah. Oh, that's oh, I was gonna <laughs> yeah. say Sorry. it's a um, an it's alternative good. rock uh, group from the late '90s. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you there know, you go. lightning yeah. strikes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. A Scooby Doo villain is a live ghost, yes. right? Yeah, but so do what we think good? specifically? And maybe Nicholas Scratch and Alice are two very different cases here. Do we think? Do we think not in flashback, but like a living Alice Wu? Do we Oof. think we see her? I I hope. I don't know. I you get to the end of the witch's road. Guts. You solve the final puzzle. You're yeah. able to get uh, a five gallon and a three gallon bucket filled. And, and everything comes and, back. And everybody comes back to life. Yeah. We get Mrs. Hart. We get Alice. Maybe we get Nicholas Scratch. All of them. Yeah. And again, enigmatic gaming saying that maybe Rio didn't think it was Alice's time to leave yet to die yet. So maybe she because she was protecting uh, Agatha, uh, Agatha. So maybe there's something oh. there potentially like, like down that. the line. So in, in that situation, maybe Agatha and Mrs. Or sorry, maybe Alice and, and Mrs. Hart different yeah. situations. Yeah. Well, I think this goes back to the kind of the bigger question of this series that we'll have to see is like, how does Agatha end the show? Is she redeemed or? It, does she choose the path of like evil by I the think, end of the show? I think, and I think if she stays a villain and villainous and and her her intentions are more negative, then I think Alice stays dead, right? I think mm. Agatha dies. I don't know, maybe all these other characters. I know they were in that in that mid season trailer, the last couple lines are uh Rio saying something, you know, it's kind of the re, mm. re, the recap of the Rio Agatha fight from the earlier episode. I mean, she just said something like, how, how will Agatha end, you know, six feet under or vertical or something like that. I don't know. Like, the vibe of that, I, I was just like, yeah, she should die. 
Anyway. I uh, I think there's too many places to bring her in the MCU to kill her in the show. And I think Marvel has just gotten itself into too many corners by killing characters off so far. Especially their most exciting characters. Like... Uh, or like didn't like obviously Tony Stark that needed to be the end of his character, but now this universe doesn't have a Tony Stark in it, so it's not as good of a universe. Or a Maria Hill. Yeah, like with Loki, <laughs> they killed off Loki, but they found this yeah. way through the multiverse. And you're right, Maria Hill. Like it's less of a happy place for that Maria Hill. For nothing, Mister Shill, Coulson, <laughs> Mister Shart. Uh, all these characters, uh, you need to have them alive in it. But like, uh, I think there are more interesting ways to bring stories to an end than just death. Sure. Uh, and there are other ways to do it. Um, I guess my question is, can Agatha help Teen or Billy? get what he wants, whether or not it's to resurrect Wanda, mm. can she help him on his journey and still retain her villain status? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. It's a good question. And yeah, whether she lives or dies, does Agatha leave the show as a villain or as a good guy? They have been portraying her not as a good guy mm -hmm. up until this point, right? Every time we think she might be getting close to redemption, yeah. uh, she kills Alice. She does... She kind of abandons her friends. She tries to break the glass, whatever, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I want Agatha to stay more villainous. I kind of like her as a villainous foil, especially a, a magic wielder, a very powerful magic wielder. I'm encouraged by the fact that WandaVision ends on kind of a, a dark tone, right? Yes, Wanda is... is she does not get she, what she wants. She undoes the hex. She embraces her Scarlet Witchness. But like leaves town, everyone's like, yo, get her. You know, they're going to go spray paint her old house uh, yeah. as soon as she walks away. So I think you could leave this place or leave this series with Agatha still being villainous, maybe helping Billy, but maybe it costs something. I don't know, because if Billy Maximoff is, has taken over a kid's body, Billy Maximoff's also in the wrong place, right? Like, what happened to this kid he took over? I just think if that was, kid was knocking on doors, asking people if they had welcomed Jesus Christ into their you, homes, you're not losing what, much by supplanting him. Dang, in dang, that are we going to see? Are we going to see that Billy Kaplan died in that wreck? But he happened to die at a time when a, free body. a floating orb of uh, Billy Maximoff yeah. was in the area and was like, Shoom. Yeah, that's and right. He was if like, he was... Tommy, you take that dead squirrel, I'll take the dead boy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the soul of Billy Kaplan has moved on to the afterlife of the MCU. He's in the Duat, he's in Valhalla, mm. and that's, that's where the body went, and this kid should be dead. This kid should be in a morgue, if not for the soul or whatever that is of Billy Maximoff inhabiting uh. the body. Is yeah. my thinking. Like, the kid should yeah. be dead. But uh, I think, like, there are examples, especially in superhero fiction, of temporary short-term team-ups between villains and heroes that ends with the villain just after that crisis is averted or solved, now goes off to do his dastardly thing. Magneto in X2. So Magneto teams up with the X-Men in X2, helps invade Stryker's lab, helps, like, say, rescue the mutant kids. Mm -hmm. And what does Magneto do? He goes further right. and continues to corrupt... Um, uh, Charles Xavier using the mastermind Jason Stryker uh, to invade his head to kill all humans and it becomes this great third act twist and you can still have a villain I think those are my favorite villain yeah. stories is where they're teaming up but then once they help them you realize that's part of their master plan to get what they want and I think we could have a similar thing with Agatha on this show where Agatha helps team gets where he wants but then at the end she goes a step further and then like now she has to now teen or Billy has to like fight her and so we have like a preemptive showdown between Death, uh, Rio Vidal, and, and Agatha. But then after that, it still sets up Agatha to be a villain to go further. Maybe she gets back a hold of the Dark Hold and then she goes crazy when she gets the Dark Hold again. Post credit singer, end of the thing, whatever, the stories was all blah, blah, blah. Boom. Slice opens up. Here comes Doctor Strange and Clea. And they're like, hey, we're just hanging out over here until they need magic people again. Come join us in the dark dimension. Agatha goes? Yeah, Agatha or Billy goes. goes. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then Billy runs over a squirrel and he's like, finally got my brother. <laughs> got him. <laughs> Dead. Uh, lastly, Jack Schaefer uh, does confirm that this week's trial, the one in episode five, was, was Agatha's trial. We kind of, on the after show, we were kind of debating who was the real trial for there. And um, thinking of her as a spirit witch... Mm. And not one of the elemental witches, the other elements of uh, water, fire, earth, and air. It's kind of, which are is one of the lines in um, the Witch's Road song. Um, so if we assume that Lilia is air, will Billy get a trial? Mm. That leaves earth for him? Yes. Well, 
Earth would maybe be Rio. Rio They've talked about the, she's green. the green witch. So does, yeah. so does Rio get a trial? That's interesting too. Right? I do yeah. feel like in one of these final episodes, we got to get a little bit more Rio. She's also been an enigma. I mean, she disappeared right. for a couple episodes. There's a lot entirely. of mystery around that. And character. then, like, not speaking a lot, we're getting almost no backstory. I mean, you know, there's been the leak of what what her character is, and they've kind of like been uh, pretty obvious about that in the show too. Mm. But like. A little bit more about what she wants, who she is, where she's mm, coming yeah. from might be nice. Where she yeah. went after that last trial. She right. didn't show Missing. up, right? Tommy didn't throw her in the mud. Yeah. yeah. And it does seem like these shots from the trailer where it's Billy. just like not Agatha Tommy, Billy. and Billy and they're inside of that room and they're, it's not like a padded cell, but it kind of feels because they're wearing kind yeah. of just like Yeah. You generic. know what they're wearing is like hospital gowns yes. that you put corpses in. I think that is a morgue. But that's a morgue Ooh. drawer. Like there is an early behind the scenes shot where that drawer rolls out. Mm. So that's like a conceptualized version of the morgue. And I think we go full circle to the morgue. Uh, and this is like a new version of the morgue. There's a clock on the ceiling. I think that is Billy's trial. Because we're losing people each trial, right? And if that's mm. if they're the only two left at that point on the road, is does that mean we're gonna lose Lily at some point? We're gonna lose Jennifer in these like next couple of trials. Oh yeah. But Jennifer's already had a trial and she survived it and like got her power back. They they made know. a point in the mm. mid season trailer of showing that scene of the guy dunking yeah. her head in the sink in the water. It feels again. like there's some resolution that needs maybe, to happen. Maybe maybe we're gonna revisit that moment in a different mm. way or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if like the reason it's in a morgue is that every drawer is gonna have one of these witches that Agatha has oh, blood on her okay. hands for. So like if you open up every drawer, there's everybody. There's uh Alice, there's Sharon, and then we might have Lilia and Jen as well. And there's some images in of like some witch fighting of characters we have not met. Right. right? Yeah, there's like the, the Salemites were killed by Agatha, and then there's like another generation in the Victorian times. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to episode one, the Agnes of Westview uh, credit sequence, the True Detective style, there are these quick flashes of inserts of just emaciated, drained witches that look like dead corpses, right? And I think those are the witches from the Victorian times. So we see in this mid-season trailer getting drained. So I think all of these witches over the ages are who are occupying these drawers in this purple lit morgue location. And I think that's ultimately is gonna be Billy's trial. And it will be like, your goal is to resurrect like either Wanda or you have to resurrect mm. everyone. You have to give back what you took from them. Yeah. And we also got, um, you know, this mis uh, mystery stranger, right? Uh, the back of this head. Fuck Ooh. Yes. It looks like Michael Fassbender's character from The Killer on Netflix. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> who it is. Do yeah, David Lynch guest directed house, episode. Like, put this trailer together and like they were or, using an old template and they could, left that shot in there and they were like, it, oh, It's interesting because, it, I mean, could you show it one more time? It appears to be, I guess it's hard to tell. That could be a woman. The gender is a little diffused. It looks like a lot of hair tucked into the the hat or the jackets. We can't really tell. That could be somebody we already know. It kind of looks like slow horses. I think it's Jackson Lamb. <laughs> oh my God. The uh, My Time to Shine Hello has claimed that Evan Peters is returning on this show and that that could be Evan Peters' character. I don't know. If it, if it were that big, I'm just curious why they put this shot at it's all so in weird. It's like a parking garage. It's a, a parking truck. garage. It's in the modern era, or at least like the 70s beyond. When did they, they didn't start building parking garages that way until like the past 50 years or Reinforced so? concrete was not a uh, feasible building material to mid-century, so. Yeah, yeah, it's the kind of location that in, you know, Watergate, Woodward and Bernstein met oh, Deep Throat in. Yeah. Uh, and it's a shadowy garage with a truck. And I speculated in the video on the Neuroxers channel that that truck could be the truck that runs uh, the, the family off the road. Oh, okay. And uh, I have also speculated that, like, you know, people are thinking it's the doctor who tried to drown Jen. I don't, that guy doesn't have the same hair. No, he's uh, like early 1900s. And, yeah, early 1900s, right? I think there, we have to consider that it might be uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. He does have similar hair like that. His shoulders do slump over like that. We don't know how tall this figure is. This might be him. Because of the divorce. He's saying. Could, it, yeah. could it also be a beekeeper esque? <laughs> Just like it's random, yeah, random character there to be creepy and throw us off the scent. Maybe, mm. maybe. But what was cool about the beekeeper in Wandavision? Didn't we see the beekeeper in a trailer, or was that completely random in episode two of one? I can't remember. But the beekeeper is in a trailer. We right. like it's unusual to see a beekeeper crawl out of a sewer at nighttime. Mm. So that was such a cool like. Twin Peaks esque, Lostian type, weird polar bear in the jungle type thing. Um, a guy wearing a, a bucket hat in a parking garage is not that same WTF. It is its own, just kind of like, 
weird thing, but it's deliberate. They put it in there because this is going to be something important. If anything, I got the vibes of the initial shot of Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight, just from behind as he's yeah. holding the clown yeah. mask as he's waiting for the dust. Ooh, yet. what an intro. Well, yeah. so, You're saying it not the Doctor. Now I'm thinking like maybe it is the Doctor because we've heard that like their magic helps them stay alive, right? Lily has been around for 450 years. Oh, so if he if stole he got Jennifer's... Jennifer's magic and he's just been like hiding out, like living his life, playing the slots every day, uh, <laughs> that's what he wanted to do. That's why he wanted to stay alive. He's like, I heard about slot machines. They're going to be big. Uh, he stayed alive, and that's him. Yeah, he would just have to have like uh, different hair, which it's possible for characters yes, to have different hair change. as they get older. Uh, and, and but it's curly here. It's purposeful. They don't show us that character's face. Uh, that was a choice made in this trailer. Now, maybe yep. we also don't see their face in the show. Maybe that's a choice made in the show as well. But yeah, very it kind of looks. Like, it kind of looks like that shot of the leader too in the. Uh, oh yeah, Captain America: Brave New World. Because uh -huh. isn't he standing in front of a window with a weird little bucket hat? Yeah, and he's, and like, he's got a yeah, he's got a world. And he can it's see it's, it's, it's changing. also very. Speaking of elder millennials, a uh, very uh, lead singer of New Radicals. You got a reason <laughs> to live. Don't. Okay, two questions. Two questions from the audience. Um, J Dog XXY asking if Mephisto is in Fortnite, doesn't that mean that Mephisto will be in Agatha? No. Eric, I'm sure you're getting a billion DMs about this. I am getting DMs about oh, this. Yeah, yeah. My personal account. Wow, this is insane. <laughs> it does not mean that he's going to be in this show. Uh, there's a lot of characters who appear in Fortnite. Galactic just in Fortnite years ago. Years ago. Now, Kevin Feige has said that there will be some overlap and that, you know, Marvel Studios has kind of consulted, but... Uh, now that Disney owns Epic, that, uh -huh. that owns Fortnite, yeah. Uh-huh, so yeah. Taskmaster showed up in Fortnite, um, I think, after Black Widow. I'm not sure what the timeline was, but... Uh, Mephisto is just a very popular Marvel villain, and it is like this, you know, a Halloween themed month. So there are a mm -hmm. lot of like, you know, dark demonic villains yeah, that are part get, of that lineup. You can get Billy from the Saw franchise. You yeah. get that skin right now. Yeah, I think it is one of these things that is probably correlated, not causal. And I think it is in the mix of clues we can look at. I'm more interested in other details, just like you know the fact that there, there there's this, this mystery man shot that you know the fact that they put it in the marketing and all is daring us to wonder yeah. who the another mystery male character would be uh and just like the title cards having missing open spots mm. like could it like, be white yeah. vision yeah. with a wig it. on Ooh. <laughs> i guess white vision can make hair yeah wig vision Vision would make hair. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he would do that. Yeah. Um, and last question here from GSU Eagle saying, Wild Theory, but at the end of the series, uh, Billy learns Agatha's ability to drain her power and raisin her, but instead of killing Agatha, she just rapidly ages to her old form. Ooh, that's oh, fun. I like that. Style. I do think audiences like probably, you know, like Catherine Hahn's version, like as her, and they yeah. don't need her to be old, like in the comics, but I don't know. What do you guys think? That's like a very... Uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith. We gotta make the Emperor look like the Emperor real quick. Yeah. Or we saw that in like Game of Thrones, right? Where Melisandre at the end of the. Uh, oh yeah, you saw her true form. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beginning. It would of season be six. interesting if she still looks like Catherine Hahn. They just give her white hair, a little bit like Bride of Frankenstein style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, I I I think maybe we can have a moment where she looks in the mirror, kind of yeah, like Kilabrimbor in The Rings of Power, and sees like what form she should have. But it should always be Catherine Hahn playing yeah. her. Yeah, I do like the young. Agatha has been like a fun device. And really, Agatha was only old in the comics because they started with, As a she's nanny. a nanny. Yeah. I think yeah. they were, you know, in the 60s, like witch coding was like old. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a penguin. No, the penguin is. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I, see, I hear it. I hear it now. It's very different. Yeah, yeah very, very different. Very different. Yes. Yeah. Is the penguin with us right now? <laughs> uh, I don't know, James. I don't know. <laughs> if you died, Penguin Oz, and you made it to heaven and God exists, what would you like me to say to you? <laughs> I'd like you to say, hey, hey, I got a bunch of fucking slushies here for you, and I mixed all the flavors together. Mm. A guy like me, make it to heaven? <laughs> a guy like me, a little Oz, coming up from Crown Point in heaven, and my mom's not here because that bitch is in hell? I love Whoa, it. he loves his mom. Yeah, but he does not want to it's spend a big, big difference between Oz and Tony Soprano. Uh, come back for this and more tomorrow <laughs> on our mid-season Penguin Check-In. Wow, that's it for today's episode of The Break Room. 
Uh, we are loving um, both Penguin, but especially Agatha all along. Yeah. Our coverage this week, Eric, there will be a Wednesday night reaction video, much mm-hmm. like we did last week. Yep. With yep. yourself. Um, so Jessica is in New York Comic Con this week. Um, so we'll be doing a late night Wednesday reaction on the New Rockstars channel uh, with me. And Gina Ippolito will be sitting in. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, Thursday morning, as you know, 11 a.m. Pacific time here on the Break Room channel. It's going to be the three of us mm-hmm. plus Gina uh, talking about whatever happens in, in Agatha episode six. Uh, and then on Friday on the New Rockstars channel, Easter egg analysis, everything you missed from Agatha episode six. And then uh, we'll be doing a special sneak peek episode on Sunday, looking ahead to episode seven uh, with Brandon and I, since Jessica won't be out. But Jessica will be back next week. And if you're in the New York area, if you're going to New York Comic Con, just look for Jessica. She'll be cosplaying as Doctor Strange. So uh, uh, see, she'll be pretty well disguised. But uh, and, and if you can't hi. find Jessica, look for Elizabeth Olsen. Jessica will be nearby. <laughs> Stalking her, trying to get into a conversation, probably. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen, that people have been speculating about that. She doesn't do a ton of conventions or whatever, she's going to be at New York Comic Con. Ooh, Love and Death Season 2 announcement! Come on! Big money, big money! Big money, big money! <laughs> uh, okay, uh, give us a follow if you haven't already on Twitch, on YouTube, on the socials, all that kind of stuff. Follow the whole network of New Rockstars channels, New Rockstars, The Deep Dive, and Break Room. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great one, everybody. Bye! Bye. See ya. Bye.